today with our first session of English. Now well, let's start with our first question. What's a language? When we think about a language, we can say that a language is a communication system that helps humans to cooperate. A language is a system. This means it's something not simple, it's a complicated. The written form and non-verbal form and the last two forms of the language may be formal form and informal form. Now let's go to our second question. What are the language skills? I mean to say the main language skills. Logically, we have four language skills. First, listening. Second, speaking. Third, reading. Fourth, writing. When we look back again at listening, it includes different things. When we say listening, when we practice listening, we listen to a source of somebody speaking. The speaker may be live like me now or recorded. The speaker handles an idea. When the speaker handles an idea, he uses words and structure. And the way he speaks and expresses himself or herself reflects his educational background, his culture, his mood, and if he likes or doesn't like the topic he's talking about. The same thing happens with speaking, but when we go to the, the skill, the language skill, which is reading, reading simply means using eyes to collect written information. Using eyes to collect written information. This written information may be symbols, numbers, words, pictures, or others. And if we go to the last language skill, it's writing. Writing, when we write, we imitate what we have read, the writing styles of someone else. Now, let's go to the sub-language skills. First, vocabulary. When we say vocabulary, it means three things. When I say that I've learned new vocabulary, this means I learned what it means, the word means, how to say it, and how to use it. Vocabulary, this is the first sub-language skill. Second, grammar. Third, pronunciation. Finally, spelling. Spelling is a sub-language skill. Now, I'm going to talk again about a very important skill in our life and especially exam for the students. This is to say writing skill. Of course, you know, preparatory students have to write 110 words in their essay and these secondary school students have to write 120, 120 words. Now we are going to go on some techniques. The first technique is Describe a picture. Describe a picture. Describe a picture. First, I'm, I'm going to give you a model. How to describe a picture? Just listen, please. In the picture, I can see the pyramids. They seem to be that these are pyramids. They are three. They were built of different sizes in different ages. They were built for kings and queens of ancient Egypt when they died. Now, the pyramid area is a tourist place. When tourists come from different parts of the world, they try to climb the better pyramid. They enjoy riding horses or camels. They take wonderful pictures. This picture reminds me of my earliest memory when I was a young student. I went on a trip with my school. There, I tried to climb the greater pyramid, but I couldn't. I was too young, but I enjoyed eating drinking, riding a donkey, and taking wonderful pictures. This is the end of my description. If we go back to how I described the picture, first, I focused on the content of the picture. I said they are the pyramids, the case are pyramids, and they are three different sizes, different ages, etc. Then, I talked about the function of this area nowadays. I said it's a gun or it has become a tourist place. Then I finished my talk about describing this picture, talking about my own memory or memories. This is how to extend the idea to write more and more. Now I'm going to show you some technique or one technique that helps the students and everybody to be more productive. First, we need a stimulus. One stimulus is like using a picture. So, when I use this picture, this picture makes us think. This is a stimulus, and it makes us think. When we think, we generate ideas. When we have ideas, these ideas need to be organized. After that, we are ready to produce. When you produce, it can be in the form of oral language or written language. Again, what I'm after now is providing you with some stimuli. These stimuli 
make people think. When they think, they generate ideas. Then they need to organize their ideas. After that, they have to, or they are ready to produce orally or in a written form. I'm trying to give you another example describing a picture. In the picture, I can see some trees. There are three. They are of different types. Trees are very important for man's life. Some trees are productive. They give us fruits. Others don't. But we need trees for their wood that we use making furniture in our houses, workplaces, and at, at schools. My favorite tree is palm tree or day tree. Why? Because it's a symbol of dignity and strength. And of course, dates are very healthy for men. Again, I have used two pictures as each one represents a stimulus that makes us think, then we generate ideas, we organize our ideas, then we start to produce in the oral form. First, I need my students to produce things orally. Then, another technique is telling a story. What I'm after is simply I'm trying to give some stimuli to our students that make them think. When they think, they generate ideas and after that these ideas need to be organized and they are ready to produce orally or in a written form now i'm going to give you a model how to tell a story and how telling a story makes students more productive and this is of course a very important step before writing i'm going to tell you a story once there was a king of course he lived in a palace and this palace was, the chi was in China. Every day, he had a meeting with his court, the people who are close to him. And every day, he started his meeting with a challenging question, a very difficult question, a question that most people couldn't answer. Once they started their meeting, and the king started with a challenging question, he asked them, how many crows are there in our city? Crows means black bird. How many crows are there in our city? And he looked at them one after the other. And nobody could give the answer. And there was one who came late. First, he apologized to the king for, for coming late. I'm sorry, your highness, but everything is clear. You seem to have asked them a question which they couldn't answer. What's the question, please? He said, how many crows are there in our city? And quickly, the latecomer gave his answer. There are 9,876 9, crows, yes, in our city. And if you send your men to count the, the crows in our city and find the number less than what I said, this means some crows from this city went to visit the relatives in the neighboring city. And if your men found the number more than what I said, this means the neighboring city crows came to visit the, the crows in our city. And everybody kept silent because this answer is a smart answer and because you cannot say that the answer is wrong or correct this is now uh, students are asked to go to the website the, any website they like and look for wonderful picture pictures about the topic they are interested in and they come to the class and tell the, the story they like most now i'm going to tell you another technique how to make students think, generate ideas, organize their ideas, then produce orally or a written, written form. This is what, tell me what you read. Tell me what you read. I'll tell you something I've read recently. I read a report about the word creativity. We are offered some stimuli that make, that make us think generate ideas, organize our ideas, and produce. When you produce, we produce orally or in a written form. The upcoming technique is tell me what you read. Tell me what you read. I'm going to tell you something I have read recently. I read a report about the definition of the word creativity. Researchers tried hard to, to say what creativity is, but they couldn't. Um, anyway, they said, when we describe a creative person, it's better to focus on the characteristics that he or she enjoys 
and we focus on two characteristics, two, fe two features. First, appropriateness. Second, originality. Let's start with the second one, originality. When, we, when I live in a society, and this society has a problem, and I may suggest a solution to this problem. When my problem is not preceded, nobody, nobody suggested this solution. This is originality. Two, appropriateness. If the, the solution I suggested uh, is appropriate for or suits the society or the problem I'm, I'm, I'm facing, this is, this is what we are after. So creativity means two things. Two characteristics. The first one, originality. The second one, appropriateness. And I'm going to tell you the next technique. Tell me what you listened to. Tell me what you listened to. Yesterday, I listened to the radio when I was in bed. And I listened to an, a, a radio report about something called the ring of fire. The ring of fire is something like a ring. And it includes more than three countries, namely the US, Argentina, and Japan. And this ring of fire is known for its violent volcanoes. And the results is simply very, very high mountains. And inside this circle, we have less violent volcanoes. In, the, in, 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 a, in a country called Haiti. And in this place, volcanoes are more gentle and lava are, or lava is gentler and it is not as violent as the ones around the circle of fire or the ring of fire. The result is long, low mountains. This is what I have listened to. So now we need to ask our students to listen to any source and for maybe for things or about things they are interested in and they come to the classroom describing or telling the class what they have listened to. Now let's do some sort of puzzles. This is the upcoming or the next technique. I'm trying to introduce some stimulus or some stimuli for the student to think, generate ideas, organize their ideas, and produce orally or in written form, doing or and making a puzzle. Now I'm trying to give you some kind of puzzles and please answer me with the answer. Um, I have something in my mind and the shorter the older, the shorter. So again, I have something in my mind. The older, the shorter. Uh, what is the answer? What am I talking about? What am I describing? What is it? The, head. the older, the shorter. Oh, it's the, head, the candle. When we light a candle, the older it becomes, the shorter it is. Uh, this, this is only one example about, um, about what? About a puzzle. And, uh, when we do something like that as a warm-up activity inside, our, inside classrooms, students are asked first to do or to, uh, to answer, to try to answer the puzzle. And after that, they go to the internet, for example, maybe books in the library, and look for some other puzzles. Another technique that, that represents a stimulus for the students that makes them think, generate ideas, organize their ideas and produce first orally many projects. Every student is asked to choose or select a topic and after that he or she searches for more information about the topic including pictures, videos, etc. and come to the classroom and simply introduces this many project. Of course many means short or small. After that the, the, the next technique is a presentation. A presentation is using the PowerPoint program on, on the computer or the data show and shows everything about an idea. This is called a presentation and of course everybody knows what a presentation is. The, the last thing I'm suggesting is st st another stimulus that makes people think, generate ideas, organize their ideas, then produce first orally 
And after that, after that, in a written form, when we come to the to writing, we need to make our writing in this form. We then one suggested form or layout of writing is a four-paragraph piece of writing. They start with an introduction, then body one, body two, and the conclusion. Again, this piece of writing starts with introduction, body one, body two, and the conclusion. Now I'm going to tell you what the structure of each paragraph. Now, each paragraph should start with a topic sentence. I'm sorry, I need to clarify. It's a sentence. It is not a title. It's not a, he a heading. It's a topic sentence. It's a sentence again. I'm trying to give you some examples. When we say using toothbrush is the key to a healthy life. When we start with a sentence like that, it makes people think about the material of um, the, the brush is made of, how to hold it, how to use it and inside the, uh, our mouth and around our teeth, the recommended toothpaste, etc. And how relevant the, this activity to our healthy life. And this is one example about, about a topic sentence. Another example, when you talk about the poor countries and the rich countries or the wealthy countries, Wealthy countries, the poor countries. The topic sentence may be as follows. The relationship between the wealthy countries and the poorer ones has always been argumentative. Again, the relationship between the wealthy countries and the poorer ones has always been argumentative. And what is this? This is, oh, there are poor countries, other rich countries, and the relationship between them is, is, is not natural, is not stable, it's argumentative. This is what, this is a topic sentence. This goes to the, the following sentences. They are called supporting sentences. Supporting why? Because they support the topic sentence. They clarify the topic sentence. And the, topic se the supporting sentences may be in the form of details, examples, or reasons. I'm going to complete my example. The relationship between the wealthy countries and the poorer ones has always been argumentative. There are many wealthy countries like the USA, Germany, Ireland, or Britain in general, France, the USA, the, of course, the KSA, and the United Arab Emirates. On the other hand, there are many poor countries like Somalia, Djibouti, and others. So, I didn't talk about how the relationship is argumentative. I only gave examples about what? About the poorer countries and the wealthy countries. This is what? This is the supporting sentences. When, uh, when we go back again about to talk about the remaining part of the introduction, we have to, to say, to have to finish the introduction with the organization sentence, organization sentence, a sentence that shows the reader how ideas are tackled, are shown, are demonstrated on the following paragraphs. That's why this, it's called organization sentence. It has a, a different name also. It's called thesis statement. Thesis statement. The idea I'm trying to clarify, the idea I'm trying to talk about in detail, giving examples and giving reasons. I'll give you how to finish my topic with a, an organization sentence or a thesis statement. Again, the relationship between the wealthy countries and the poorer ones has always been argumentative. There are many wealthy countries like the USA, the KSA, the, the United Arab Emirates and others. On the other hand, there are very poor countries like Djibouti, Somalia and others. There are two opposing views about the relationship between the wealthy countries and the poorer ones. This is the, the thesis statement or the organization sentence. Again, there are two opposing views about, about what? 
about the relationship between the wealthy countries and the poor ones. So again, what I was after today is to, to give you some stimuli. These stimuli may be in the form of a picture we try to describe, a story we tell or retell, something we read, and we tell other people what we read, something we listen to and we tell other people what we listen to, a puzzle we do or make, a demonstration we give, a presentation we give, or a mini, present a mini project we, sh we demonstrate for our colleagues at school, college, or any other place. place. Again, these are different kinds of stimuli. They make us think. When we think, we generate ideas. When we generate ideas, these ideas are need or need to be organized. And at that time, we are ready to produce. Produce what? Produce in the oral form and finally in the written form. Like this. Of course, this is the format of the introduction. And we need our writing to be in this form. The form of introduction, body one, body two, and conclusion. And if we go back quickly to the four language skills, which are, I mean to say, the main language skills, they are listening, speaking, reading, and writing. And we can classify them into two groups. The first group is receptive skills. We receive when we listen, we receive when we read. And the productive skills, we produce when we speak and we produce when we, we write. And of course, when we come to, the, to exams, we need to write. First, you need to be a good speaker before you come to be a good writer. And when you listen and listen and listen, you are more and more ready to be a good speaker. When you read and read and read, you are, you are better or you are expected to be a good writer. That's how students may be able to write better and better and they try hard with the help of their students, maybe their supervisors, maybe their teachers, maybe their parents at home to be more and more productive. Thank you for attending my class today. See you next time.